COVID-19 has spread to more than 200 countries and territories, infecting over 1 million people and taken more than 60,000 lives. Today, to control the spread of the virus, more than 3.9 million people, or half of humanity, are on lockdown. In Singapore, we have progressively ratcheted up our measures as the situation develops and the medical evidence comes in. To minimise the risk of import of cases, we have severely restricted incoming flights, and Singapore Airlines mounted dedicated flights to bring back Singaporeans who were overseas. To limit local transmission, we have implemented comprehensive and complementary measures, safe distancing, early identification and isolation of cases, and quarantine of close contacts. These have kept the number of infections manageable, but in recent days, the numbers have been rising. Local transmission has increased and continues to grow. As of yesterday, we have a total of 1,309 infection cases. Six have succumbed to the virus. These individuals mostly became infected when they were in close contact with infected persons at the social, workplace and family settings. Some clusters have emerged in our foreign worker dormitories. To stay on top of the situation, the government has taken a decisive step to preempt escalating infections. It is critical that every one of us keeps fiscal contact with others to a minimum. PM addressed the nation last Friday. The multi-ministry task force announced an elevated set of safe distancing measures immediately after that. These circuit breaker measures begin tomorrow and will last for four weeks. The circuit breaker is essential, but we are acutely aware that it will be painful. It will disrupt businesses and impact workers severely. We will miss face-to-face -face interactions with our friends and family. family. Familiar routines will be put on hold. Many will be anxious about their jobs and families. As the pandemic sweeps through the world, restrictions put in place in our trading partners will reduce demand for our exports even more. We must expect our overall GDP growth to take a further hit. But we must take these hard decisions, make the difficult adjustments, and do all that we can in the next few months to protect the lives of our people. Otherwise, if the outbreak escalates, the impact on lives and livelihoods will be even worse. We must take short-term pains to avoid even sharper pain later. Let us bear this immediate pains with fortitude and stay strong. In the resilience budget, the government committed $48 billion to support workers, protect livelihoods, and help enterprises overcome immediate challenges. We obtained the President's in principle support for a draw of up to $17 billion from our past reserves towards this. To further support our people and businesses during these extraordinary four weeks, when the circuit breaker measures are in place, I will bolster the resilience budget with a supplementary solidarity budget. The unity, resilience and solidarity budgets all build upon and reinforce each other. Together, they represent our strong and decisive response to the economic and social consequences of the COVID-19 crisis. I thank the Labour Movement, the Singapore Business Federation, as well as citizens from all walks of life for your valuable feedback. Your inputs matter. They have helped us to better understand the situation and quickly shape the support we now need. The primary aim of this solidarity budget is to take further steps to save jobs and protect the livelihoods of our people during this temporary period of heightened measures. We also help businesses preserve their capacity and capabilities to resume activities when the circuit breaker is lifted. I will also provide direct cash in hand for households to help tide families through this difficult period. 
All of us will be affected by these necessary circuit breaker measures, some more than others. To reach as many as we can as fast as possible, the enhanced measures in the solidarity budget are broad-based. First, we'll support our businesses to retain their workers and to stay nimble. In my ministerial statement on 26 March in this House, I mentioned the three C's of support for firms' immediate needs, cash, cost, and credit. I will su increase support in all three areas. Many firms cannot operate at all or can only operate at a much reduced level in the coming weeks. But they should still retain and pay their workers. I will enhance the jobs support scheme to support them in doing so. This will help our workers keep their jobs and enable businesses to resume operations quickly when the circuit breaker is lifted. I announced earlier in the resilience budget that the jobs support scheme will subsidize 25% of the first $4,600 of gross monthly wages for all local employees. I provided higher levels of wage subsidy for sectors that are more directly hit by the outbreak, 50% for firms in the food services sector and 75% for the aviation and tourism sectors. With the latest development, almost every business and every worker will be directly affected in the coming weeks. I will therefore enhance the jobs support scheme for the month of April. In this solidarity budget, I will raise the wage subsidy for all firms to 75% of gross monthly wages for the first $4,600 of wages paid in April 2020 for each local employee. The details are in the annex. Let me take this opportunity to clarify that for this and for the earlier resilience budget, the wage cap of $4,600 does not mean that workers earning more than $4,600 do not qualify. Rather, it means that this wage subsidy applies to every one of our over 1.9 million local employees. But regardless of how much they earn, the maximum subsidy to the firms will be 75% of $4,600 per person, which is $3,450. The salary limit of $4,600 is based on our median wage level of full-time employed residents. I understand the cash needs of businesses are very pressing in this difficult period. Hence, our agencies have been working very hard to bring forward the first job support scheme payouts from May to April 2020. The enhanced payout for April wages will be paid in this tranche. Firms on gyro and pay now will start receiving the first job support scheme payout next week. Firms which are not on gyro or pay now will receive their payouts by check, starting about a week later. The aim of this strong support is to directly reduce firms' wage costs to help them retain their workers. I expect firms to make use of this job support scheme to continue paying your workers and refrain from putting workers on no pay leave during this period, or worse, retrenching them. We will monitor the situation carefully together with our tripartite partners and take action where needed. Many employers also hire foreign workers on work permits and S passes. In the same spirit, employers should take care of these workers who will also face difficulties during this circuit breaker period. By taking care of their workers, our firms can resume operations quickly once the heightened measures are lifted. To ease the labour costs of such firms during these four weeks, I will waive the monthly foreign worker levy due in April. This will reduce their cost and relieve the pressures on their cash flow. To help them preserve their business structure and quickly resume operations, we will also provide employers with a foreign worker levy rebate of $750 for each work permit or S-pass holder based on previous levies paid in 2020. This will help employers pay and take care of the upkeep of their workers and prepare their workforce to restart when the circuit breaker is lifted. 
Employers will receive the rebates as early as 21st April 2020. The government recognises that firms have been paying foreign workers' levy in normal times. So in these exceptional times, we are temporarily redirecting resources back to the firms to enable them to provide support for their foreign workers. The Minister for Manpower will share more details. To further support businesses with costs, we are taking additional steps to make sure that our measures flow down to businesses. I earlier an announced a property tax rebate of up to 100% for non-residential properties for the tax payable in 2020. This rebate is to help businesses deal with the impact of COVID-19. For most properties, the 100% property tax rebate works out to slightly more than one month of rent. The Minister for Law will introduce a bill tomorrow to let businesses and individuals defer certain contractual obligations such as paying rents, repaying loans or completing work for a period. The bill will also ensure that property owners pass on the property tax rebate in full to tenants, as PM mentioned in his address. The government will also continue to lead by example in supporting tenants. I will increase the rental waiver for industrial, office and agricultural tenants of government agencies to one month, up from 0.5 month rental waiver I announced at the Resilience Budget. Storeholders in hawker centres managed by NEA or NEA appointed operators will continue to enjoy three months of rental waivers, while commercial tenants will continue to receive two months of rental waivers. I've touched on the first two Cs, cost and cash flow. The third C is credit. To provide additional support on credit, I will further enhance financing support for enterprises so that viable businesses can continue to have access to credit despite the uncertainty. I will increase government's risk share of loans made under the Temporary Bridging Loan Program, Enterprise Financing Scheme SME Working Capital Loan and Enterprise Financing Scheme Trade Loan from 80 to 90 per cent for loans initiated from 8th April 2020 until 31st March 2021. Last week, MAS together with the financial institutions also introduced a package of measures to help SMEs and with temporary cash flow difficulties. For example, SMEs can now opt to defer principal payments on their secured term loans till the end of the year. More than $40 billion of SMEs' existing loans are likely to qualify for this relief. Banks and finance companies may also apply for low-cost funding through a new MAS Singapore Dollar Facility for new loans granted under the Enterprise Financing Scheme SME Working Capital Loan and Temporary Bridging Loan Program. If they do so, they must commit to pass on the savings to their borrowers. The economy needs support and intervention in many different forms to go through this rough patch. I urge all businesses, landlords, financial institutions and industry players to do your part in channeling the government's support measures to firms, workers and households. The enhancements I've just announced are to help workers who are employed by businesses to stay employed. For self-employed persons, we have put in place the Self-Employed Person Income Relief Scheme or SERS to provide direct cash assistance. This is the first time that we are providing direct cash support to self-employed persons on such a large scale. They are a very diverse group with different working hours and work arrangements. Some do this as full-time jobs while others do this as part-time to supplement their income. Some have been contributing CPF while others have not. Since the announcement on 26 March, the Minister for Manpower, NTUC Secretary General and I, as well as our government's agencies, have received feedback from various self-employed persons whose livelihoods have been affected. During this circuit breaker period, more will see a further drop in income. 
For instance, there are self-employed persons who are engaged in some employment work to supplement their incomes. Another group of self-employed persons brought an executive condominium some years ago. Their income is now severely affected by the pandemic and they still have to support multiple family members' daily needs or medical bills. After considering the appeals, we will broaden the support for self-employed persons. I will make two enhancements. First, I will extend SERS to automatically include self-employed persons who also earn a small income from employment work. Second, I will raise the current annual value threshold up from $13,000 to up to $21,000 to include those who live in some condominiums and other private properties. The other criteria remain unchanged. With these enhancements, a total of about 100,000 self-employed persons will automatically be eligible for the scheme and will receive three payments of $3,000 each starting from May 2020. On the other hand, many have shared their views that SERS is overly generous. Some have asked, why do we allow self-employed persons with annual net trade income of what, up to $100,000 to qualify? As I explained earlier, self-employed persons are a very diverse group. Some are own account workers, like taxi drivers, who engage in a trade or business but do not employ any paid workers. Others are sole proprietors who own small businesses that have employees and a network of business relations. In these extraordinary times, many such self-employed persons are hard hit. I hope that by our helping them, they too can help others in their networks and their workers, and we keep the spirit of enterprise alive. In the spirit of tripartism, NTUC Secretary General Ng Chi Ming has also agreed to step up and help administer the application and appeals for SERS and support self-employed persons in need. Our approach now is to build up a network of support for as many as possible, as quickly as possible. Let me reiterate that those who do not need this and do not qualify should not come forward to appeal for and abuse of support. Otherwise, you undermine public confidence and take up unnecessary resources. But done right, together, we can help many self-employed persons who are hard hit. MOM will work closely with NTUC to start processing appeals for SERS as soon as possible. I've spoken about our support for firms and workers. I also provide timely support for households to ensure that no household stands alone during this difficult period. All adult Singaporeans will receive a one-off solidarity payment of $600 in cash. I'll bring forward $300 from the care and support cash payout that I announced earlier. On top of this, I will provide an additional $300 bringing the total to $600 for every adult Singaporean aged 21 and above. For the majority of Singaporeans who have provided their bank account details to the government, the solidarity payments will be credited directly into your bank accounts by 14 April 2020. The rest will receive the payment by cheque to be issued in stages later starting from 30th April 2020. Other cash payouts under the Care and Support Package, which were earlier announced, will be brought forward to June 2020 instead of August 2020. This includes the remaining $300 or $600 from the higher tiers of the Care and Support Cash payouts, the additional $300 payouts for each parent with at least one child aged 20 years and below, and the $100 PA passion card top-ups, which will be given in cash for Singaporeans aged 50 and above. Details are in the annex. Not everyone will need these cash payouts. I'm very encouraged that many have written to me, my ministerial colleagues and MPs, that they do not need the cash payouts, 
and suggests that we give this to those who need the cash more. I thank fellow Singaporeans for your thoughtfulness. I urge those who can to donate to charities on the giving.sg website or the Community Chest Courage Fund or to directly share it with others. For those who still need more support, please approach our social service officers and community centres to apply for new schemes such as a temporary relief fund and the upcoming COVID-19 support grant, which is available from May 2020, as well as existing Comcare assistance. Some Singaporeans will also be emotionally affected or distressed in this period. So besides financial support, let us provide emotional and mental health support to our people. Our community mental health support services will continue to provide care and support for clients through phone consultations or home visits for those who may need more support. Over the weekend, MSF announced that we will set up a 24-7 national care hotline. In this time of need, I'm glad that mental health professionals and trained volunteers have stepped forward to offer their help in setting up the new hotline. Thank you. These additional measures will cost $5.1 billion, with $4 billion for the additional support for businesses and workers, and $1.1 billion for the solidarity payment. The President has earlier given her in principle support for the government to draw up to $17 billion from past reserves to fund some of the measures in the resilience budget to save jobs and businesses. I also told members that when then that I was prepared to propose to the President further draws on past reserves should it be necessary. With the significantly stricter preemptive measures needed to protect Singaporeans and our families, it is now necessary for us to propose a further draw on past reserves. These measures will impact our workers and businesses severely. Additional support will be required to save jobs, preserve capabilities, and provide immediate direct assistance to Singaporeans to help them tide through this exceptional and difficult period. Therefore, I have sought and obtained the President's in principle support to draw on an additional $4 billion from past reserves. Specifically, this will be used to fund the Enhanced Job Support Scheme, the Temporary Bridging Loan Program, and Enterprise Financing Schemes, and the Solidarity Payments to Singaporeans. Details are in the Annex. The remaining $1.1 billion will be funded from the fiscal space of this term of government. To effect the additional spending for the measures that I have announced today, I intend to seek Parliament's approval at the Committee of Supply to increase the supplementary estimates that were presented to Parliament on 26 March this year on the Certificate of Urgency. I will subsequently seek Parliament's approval to introduce a revised supplementary supply bill that caters for the additional sums required. Taken together, the government's response to COVID-19 will total $59.9 billion, or about 12% of GDP. The overall budget deficit for financial year 2020 will increase to $44.3 billion, or 8.9% of GDP. Details are in the Annex. This is an unprecedented budget for extraordinary times. The situation remains highly fluid and uncertain. The government stands ready to provide further support should it become necessary. Mr. Speaker, sir, before I conclude, allow me to say a few words in Mandarin. 
我们在接下来。spread of the disease, we will be adopting enhanced safe distancing measures in the following month. Apart from those providing essential services and industries in the main financial sector, all other offices will be shut down with effect from tomorrow. With the continuing increase in the number of locally infected cases, if we do not further enhance our precautionary measures, the disease situation will quickly worsen, thereby overwhelming our medical system. Our imminent task is to protect the health of our people, because health is wealth. Money lost can be earned again later on, but if you lose your health or even your life, then what remains will only be regrets. As such, for our safety and health, everyone must strictly observe these precautionary measures. They must observe these precautionary measures. These measures will seriously impact the operation of the enterprises and the daily lives of our people. In order to provide assistance to our people, apart from the two previously announced budgets, I will be presenting a 5.5 billion to a concert solidarity budget. This is the third budget announced by the government within a short span of two months. It is unprecedented. The main purpose is to keep our enterprises alive, to help them retain the workers and their jobs, so that everyone may tide over this extraordinary period and persist on. For this, I will raise the wage subsidy of the job support scheme for April uh, from 25% to 75% for a period of one month. This revision will cover all industries. We would also legislate that the property owners will pass on the property tax rebate in full to their talents. We will also relax the eligibility criteria for the self-employed person uh, income from half a month to uh, one month. Apart from that, we would adopt uh, further uh, measures through the um, systems to help the Enterprises continue to obtain the financing so that they could carry on with their business. We will relax the eligibility criteria for the self-employed person income relief scheme and to help the self-employed um, persons. So if they reside in a property with current annual value of up to 21,000, they will qualify for the cash relief. In this period, many enterprises who employ uh, foreign workers, they may not be able to start work in order for this uh, enterprises to cope with the uh, manpower costs and to make sure they continue to look after the foreign trades, we will waive the foreign workers levy uh, for the month of April and we will also give them additional uh, foreign workers levy rebate and so every Holders of a work permit and as permit will receive a repeat of $750. Also, in order to lighten many families' cost of living burden, all adult Singaporeans will receive a one off solidary cash payout of $600. I had announced in the past that uh, Singaporeans will receive a cash rebate under the care and support scheme. Now from this uh, scheme, I will first release $300 and add in an additional $300. In other words, every adult Singaporean will receive a solidarity payment of $600 in cash. In the past, I have raised that uh, if necessary, we would uh, draw on more 
from the past reserve to fund new measures. I have received the in-principle support from President Halima to draw on the past reserve to fund the new uh, measures announced today. To this month, to many enterprises, this coming month will be very difficult. I hope that these new measures will help our enterprises to tide over the difficult period. In these extraordinary times, we must continue to care for one another, particularly the elderly loved ones and the vulnerable individuals. We must pay attention to our health, our personal hygiene and cultivate good habits. So long as we are in one heart, keep healthy and let the government pass budgets to help us keep our jobs, keep our enterprises and to keep our future, Singapore will eventually emerge from the difficult situation conquer the pandemic and fight on even more courageously. Mr. Speaker, sir, I will now conclude in English. This is a generational crisis with no precedent. We have brought all our resources and administrative capacity to bear to mount a national effort for our workers, businesses and families to protect both lives and livelihoods. We have the plans and the financial resources to carry out these plans without burdening future generations with the bill. We are grateful to our founding generations for their foresight and discipline. The key now is how we can pull together in solidarity as a nation to implement these plans and make adjustments as the situation continues to evolve. COVID-19 is testing nations worldwide and revealing more about governments, about each society, our identity, and the values that hold us together. Though the pandemic is global, the impact on each country depends greatly on the different actions and responses of each government and their people. Trust and confidence of our people in the government are critical. Our people must understand that we are facing what we are facing and support what we are doing. This is why we have been forthcoming and transparent with Singaporeans. We are honest about the uncertainties and challenges ahead and honest about the price we need to pay for what we need to do. We have been able to make bold and swift actions because we have the trust of Singaporeans, painstakingly built up over the years by delivering for Singaporeans. With the circuit breaker in place for the next one month, everyone will have to adjust and adapt. Not just our fiscal routines, but our mindsets and habits. As Minister Lawrence Wong said, every person is, in fact, on the front lines. Every Singaporean can make a difference in slowing down the spread of the virus today. To keep out the virus, every one of us must play our part. Be socially responsible, by staying home, staying safe, and staying healthy. Each and every one of us must do our best to stem the escalating infections, to prevent our healthcare system from being overwhelmed. As we do so, we must keep, up, keep our spirits up and look out for each other, especially our seniors and the more vulnerable. Our government agencies, as well as many volunteers are contributing their best to care for our vulnerable groups. We may not be able to physically visit our extended families and close friends, but we can stay in touch and connect through phone or video. I'm confident that we can and will pull close together as a nation, even as we physically distance ourselves to save lives. Let us unite demonstrate our resilience, stay united, and press on in solidarity. Together, we will emerge stronger from this.